Howdy, folks. My name is Wellington Yoakum of the Perry Sound Yoakums in Canada. My family and friends just call me Wally since I was knee high to my older sister Ada. I worked on the Canadian Railroad. So tough in the winter, at end of track, we had to slaughter horses in order to survive duration. I worked in logging in those days when I was young with an ax in hand. I have fell many a tree in the wood. For a spell I was a mill hand at LaSalle's Flour and Grain Mill, getting enough money saved and then traveled to the Yukon to fetch for gold. The only folks making money then was the saloons serving whiskey, women, and food, and not much gold in them there hills, not in my camp anyways. I heard about America and joined my cousin in Ohio, just about 30 miles south of Cleveland, off the great Lake Erie. A nice place, peaceful with work at the local quarry in Berea for a spell, a lot of hard work, but I did learn how to set charges and work with dynamite for a spell. It was in 1849, and little did I know, my journey had just begun. The 1850 donation land law was enacted September 1850, so the regular Joe could go west to Oregon and stake a claim of 320 acres. So in late January 1851, with some 1,000 men, women, and children, we climbed aboard our wagons and steered our mules and horses west out of the small town of Elm Grove, Missouri. The train compromised more than 100 wagons with a herd of 5,000 oxen and cattle trailing behind. Dr. Elijah White, a Presbyterian missionary who had made the trip the year before served as our guide. Although many of us believe Indians was our greatest threat, we quickly learned that we were more likely to be injured or killed by other causes, such as accidental discharge of firearms, falling off mules or horses, drowning in river crossings, and disease like cholera, measles, and consumption. After entering the mountains, the trail also became much more difficult with steep ascents and descents over rocky terrain. We all risked injury from overturned and runaway wagons. When I reached Fort Hall in present-day Idaho, I heard of Jesse and Lindsay Applegate who had been scouring the trails of Oregon, and they told me that they were going to take a safer route to the south, ending up just north of the California border in a place called the Rogue Valley. At that time, I joined the Applegate Trail and departed the main branch off the Oregon Trail. This turned out to be a small train of just 250 settlers looking for free land. This southern route was also known as the South Road, South Immigrant Trail, or the Scott Applegate Trail. It was quite a spell and a lot of work, and after six months, I reached my destination late July 1851 in the fertile, well-watered land of the Rogue Valley in Southern Oregon. The end of my journey was just the beginning, as I moseyed around end of trail, where Ashland is today. I did like the area and found work here and there, fetched a paycheck working in the woods up into the Cascade and Siskiyou Mountains near a beautiful snow-capped mountain that is called today Mount Ashland. Eventually a lumber mill and flour mill was built and operated just off Bear Creek. First I worked as a flour mill hand for a Sylvester Waite. The small town was called Gasburg on account of a gent in the mill's kitchen just jabbered like a magpie and could not stop talking. 
I worked there for a spell until Indian problems caused the owner to shut the place down and move on to Washington. The town was officially named Phoenix, real official like in 1857 with the new post office. I had known two brothers named Hiram and Samuel Culver. Samuel Culver laid out the town in 1854. He's a nice enough gent. I was offered a job by Milton Lindley who operated a sawmill located on Bear Creek that provided timber for all the building going on because of the Donation Land Act. And though working for my grub stake, I stake my claim on 320 acres northeast of Phoenix, right on Bear Creek and to the north, where about I grew grain and eventually the new owner of the flour mill bought my crop each year and it was a true blessing. I found me a wife named Betsy, and we had our children, Charlie, Elva, Myrtle, Ada, Margaret, and Olive. I surely tell you that being a pioneer was hard work, but it was all worth it in my labor of love to have free land given to me just for working it and keeping it improved a spell. And at times, I sold off some of it to make a little extra cash as I needed it. We all had a great life until it was the end of our trail in the big sky. Don't forget us, those who came before you to God's Garden of Eden, the Rogue Valley. Hi there, I'm Bill Kiefer. I do videos. I have over 14 YouTube channels covering many, many venues, music, restaurants, anything you can think of. I have over 2,000 videos on YouTube. So give me a call if you need a video for marketing your business or yourself. 